It's good to see you today. Appreciate you joining us. We are in 1 Corinthians chapter 7. 1 Corinthians chapter 7. Today we are going to be looking at verses 4 and 5. Let's get over there and let's read together. Verse <laughs> left off where we did last, where we did yesterday, didn't I? Here in chapter 7, verse 4, pardon me, says the wife does not have authority over her own body, but the husband does. And likewise, the husband does not have authority over his own body, but the wife does. Do not deprive one another except with, a consent, for, except with consent for a time, that you may give yourselves to fasting and prayer and come together again, so that Satan does not tempt you because of your lack of self-control. The chapter is talking about marriage and other things as well, but primarily marriage. Chapter 6 ended by talking about sexual immorality, but they had questions for Paul, and Paul is trying to deal with their questions. But So here he's, he's talking about, and we touched on it yesterday as well, but I, I wanted to just think about marriage and how marriage is supposed to work just within these two verses, just a couple ideas that, that Paul wants them to consider. So, within these verses, one thing is this. To think about marriage, what does consenting require? It requires communication. Look back at the verse. Do not deprive one another except with consent for a time. Well, consent from whom? The other person. That's there there needs to be communication. In any marriage, there needs to be a communication. And it's when communication starts breaking down that any relationship starts breaking down. So husbands and wives need to be talking and speaking with one another. And here, as it speaks about the, the topic of, of marital relations, e even there, there needs to be communication and consenting and, and esteeming others better than the individual. And that's kind of our second point. You have to consider them. Look back at the passage. Do not deprive one another except with him. Uh, verse 4. The wife does not have authority over her own body, but the husband does. And likewise, the husband does not have authority over his own body, but the wife does. You have to, in, in marriage, you have to consider the other person. And I'll say not even just consider, but we know what other passages are going to talk about. Not, not within the marriage but other passages are going to say things like esteem others better than yourself. Who has authority over my body according to the passage in 1 Corinthians 7? My wife does. Who has authority over her body? I do. So this completely deflates the idea. Another phrase. And, and I want us to just see how these ideas are even applied within marriage. Think about the phrase lording it over the flock. The idea of lording it over someone else. Well, I think sometimes husbands, and perhaps wives too, I think either one could do it, they get into the lording business. And it's, and that's not what marriage is supposed to be. It's no, they have authority over your body and you have authority over their body. Communicate, talk, and consider them. Consider them. That's how this is supposed to work. But also, make sure you're not neglecting spirituality. Do not deprive one another except with consent for a time that you may give yourself, so this is the reason, that you may give yourself to fasting and prayer. If you're real gung-ho, if you're real zealous there in Corinth, and there were people that were real gung-ho and real zealous, it would be real easy to say, I don't think we should spend as much time together. I think I need to give myself more to prayer and fasting. That situation is very, very similar to what Jesus talks about when children were not taking care of their parents and he condemns the practice of Corbin. Well, I, I don't have to take care of you because I've dedicated this money to the temple or whatever. And the Lord says, no, that's not how this works. Well, in Corinth, it would have been real easy to say, 
Mm, sorry, I don't have as much time for you, sweetie. I'm giving all my time to fasting and prayer. That's not how this works either. No, you need to be together. You need to be with your spouse, even in marital, I keep saying marital relations. You all know what I'm talking about. But at the same time, do not neglect spirituality. Do not live for this. Corinth, before they became Christians, everybody was living for Everybody was living for sex. It was a sexually charged society. It was as they were. That's what it was. It was a sexually charged society. We talked about it yesterday. Paul says, no, it's not wrong to have sex with your spouse, but don't live for that. Do not neglect spiritual matters. I think that's one of the points within this, this chapter. Don't neglect spirituality. Don't just live for sex and things along those lines. And you better be aware of what the devil wants. And come together again so that Satan does not tempt you because of your lack of self-control. Would Satan love to get his hooks into a marriage? Better believe it. You better believe it. Because if he can blow a marriage apart, he can blow a family apart, and all of a sudden you have people that are not willing to worship together, not willing to assemble together, and you see it time and time again. You could have a whole family be lost because Satan gets his hooks in a marriage. You better be real careful and be aware of what the devil wants. So therefore, we make our marriage as good as possible. Communication, considering them, not neglecting spirituality, but actually making spirituality the bedrock. Following the Lord, make that the bedrock of the, of the marriage, knowing what the devil wants. Hope this study has been beneficial for you. Hope you found it edifying. Appreciate you tuning in. I hope you tune in tomorrow for another brief look into God's Word. Thanks for being with us today.